Hello everyone, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel and my craft table. I am super excited to have you here with me today and welcome if you are new. I'm so glad to have you here. So I thought that I would start off today's craft with a short little Hobby Lobby haul just in case you also are interested in the things that I have purchased. So the first couple of things that I have to show you were actually a steel and a half. So this was the um, in the 4th of July section right up by the checkouts and they were having a major clearance. Y'all, these were 75% off, which meant I only paid a quarter of what they originally cost, which was just mind boggling. I normally don't spend a lot of time running around stores, you know, just, oh, it's the end of a, of a season or it's the end of a, of a holiday. Let's go get all the clearance stuff. I don't always do that, but sometimes I manage to fall into a good deal. So this is just a large charger. It's red and this is a 13 inch charger and it is was $3.99. It is not intended for food use and it is hand wash only. So this literally is just a decorative plate and I paid like 97 cents for this. Um, so I thought that was a great deal. Then I happened to see these and I actually bought all three of them. So I feel really kind of guilty that I just snatched up the remaining of these that were available on the shelf. Um, makes me feel a little bit um, greedy, but these are basically, um, these are food safe, hand wash only. And um, based on what I work with with wood, this, this almost feels like some sort of bamboo type wood, but I really am not sure. Anyway, all of these were $3.99 and I paid like 97 cents for these. And what I love about them is this star reminds me of when I lived in Texas and I love the little juice um, ring around. So these are charcuterie boards, so great for parties. I think if I were to decorate with these, I would probably decorate on the back with vinyl, etc., and then leave the front like this so that I still have access to the food safe size side of the board. And so I have three of them and I'm maybe potentially going to use a couple of these for gifts. I'm not quite sure, but I definitely love these and my husband just was like oh my goodness those are awesome so this was a great find that i had no intention on purchasing when i had gone into hobby lobby what i did go into hobby lobby for specifically was is i bought several of these sublimation blank kitchen towels now these are approximately 18 inches by 28 inches and they're 149 a piece. So I purchased like, gosh, I think I purchased like six of these because I had, you know, we've got fall coming up, we've got Halloween coming up, we've got Thanksgiving, we have Christmas. So these are great to have on hand and these would work great for infusible ink. You could do iron on vinyl. You could do um, the printable iron on, which means that you could then do like a, a print and cut design. So I'm super excited about these and bringing these to the channel. So I've got six of those. And on my way back to that department, I happened to see this. Now, there were several sizes and shapes, but this is basically an acrylic wood sign and it just sits in this base right here. This was part of the spring shop and you can see that originally it is $4.99 and I had, it was like 50% off. 
So you definitely probably want to check your Hobby Lobby if they still have the spring shop items available. Here it is, you know, the beginning of July. Well, you know, almost mid-July, really. But if they have any items still available, they're look, you're looking at like 50% off if they haven't marked them down even further. So I may go back and check myself. Um, this would be a great sign to have in my classroom. So I kind of wish I had bought more, but um, these here are great for acrylic. I mean, sorry, um, for, uh, the vinyl. Sorry, man, I'm reading and trying to talk at the same time. That doesn't really work very well. So this acrylic sign works great for the uh, vinyl projects. And so, yeah, check it out at your local Hobby Lobby. And I think now that I'm talking to you, I will probably go back and see if I can find more of these because I can think of a hundred ways to use these particular signs. And then I also buy the, um, buy the sublimation blanks where all the stamping stuff was. I just picked up another package of these applicator bottles. These at Hobby Lobby were $2.29. And you guys have seen these on my channel and several of you have asked me about these. These, I got a three pack at Michael's. Um, it's the same type bottle, same style bottle. And I had three of these in a package from Michael's and I wanna say they were like three something and they were in the aisle where all the stamps and stamp pads are. But I saw this at Hobby Lobby and these are a little bit bigger. So I wanted to try these out. So this will be for my craft glue. That was a good find. And then this jewelry case right here. Now this jewelry storage case has um, about, oh, 24 of these tiny little jars. And this is called a beach storage system. And so here's what my thinking was. And I paid $5.49 for this, but I have had this in my craft room for a bit. I This was part of an earlier video from way back when. But what I have kept in here are, I've got some paper embellishments from a project. I've got some um, kind of like confetti, confetti glitter. I've got some Simon Says Stamp jewels from one of my card kits that I subscribe to. I've got some little flowers. I've got the amazing dewdrops. I have some um, red, white, and blue shaker type elements and my little craft logos. So what I wanted to do was transfer these items into this box here. And what I'm actually hoping is that these jars are about the same size as these and I'll just swap them out because I really don't feel like pouring out this confetti and getting it everywhere. So I'm hoping I can just make a quick little swap of the jars. And then I do have a whole bunch more. So I've got some of these sequent packets. These came from the Dollar Tree. I've got some jars that I picked up from Michael's of more. Um, I've got some more confetti chunky glitter. These cute little candy confettis, I've made cards with those. Those are so fun. And then I've got these I wanted to move out of here. I've got balloon confetti. I've got some sparkle holographic stars. And I think what I'm going to do, the reason why I'm doing this in particular is because I have these. This, These were the original four embellishments that I started out with, these four right here, and I'm slowly getting a um, stockpile, but these are clear ice drops. These are iridescent sequin. These, I love these. These are my favorite. Um, I got these, both of these on Simon Says Stamp. I have to find the name of what they are. But these, along with the dew drops, I wanted to keep in the larger um, containers. So in order for that to happen, I've got to have a, another container to move all of the smaller amounts of supply. So that is the um, reason for purchasing this. I'm very excited about that particular 
um, part of organizing. Actually, that is an avalanche waiting to happen. Okay, and then finally, this is what the craft is going to be today. So I purchased, this is the Hobby Lobby wood pile. Now, as of filming, they have 40% off of their wood pile um, blanks, but they have to be $4.99 and above. This was $3.49, so I did pay full price for this. But this particular box is going to be our craft today, and we're going to put a really cute design on it. And the reason for this box, kind of a spoiler alert, is every I live in a very tiny place and when I had my really big ranch house in Texas I had plenty of time or plenty of space to spread out and so Christmas cards that would come in the mail they were like on the mantle and they were on the console table and they were everywhere the, I used them like display art because they were so pretty and a lot of people sent pictures so this year, what I thought, because I've just kind of basically been stacking my cards in a not so elegant pile as they came in, and I just don't have places to display them necessarily, but I do like being able to look at them throughout the season. So my thought was I would make a Christmas box. And that these are the Christmas cards that I have made recently, and I will link to the videos for these in case you are wanting to um, recreate some of those yourself. But what my thought was is as Christmas cards come in to the house this year, then I can just store them like this and be able to flip through them and enjoy them and look at them. And that way they're all in one safe place Okay, and in the meantime, until all of that starts happening, then all of the Christmas cards that I'm actually making to send out will have a home to stay in while um, I'm waiting to send them out. So I'll be just putting my gift tags that I make and the Christmas cards that I make, and we're going to put a really cute design here on this box. Okay, let's go ahead and jump over to Design Space and let me show you the design. I will link it down in the description of this video so that you can also recreate this project if you would like to, but I would like to just show you a couple of things about the design that you need to be aware of. So this is the design that we're gonna be putting on the side of the box here in just a moment. And I do already have this cut out so that our time together will be more efficient. Now, I just whipped this up on my Joy this morning, but you could absolutely do this on any of the Cricut machines. Just remember to change your machine selection up here in the top right. So as far as the design is concerned, this design I found in Design Space, and it actually comes in, everything like this is all, it is all grouped together and it looks just like this. Okay, so what I did for my purposes is the trees, the black outlines of the trees and the Merry Christmas are one welded, um, they are one welded image. So what I did is I duplicated it and then I'll show you. I went down to the contour feature and I got rid of all of the trees on one and then in the other I selected the other one and I got rid of the Merry Christmas also using the contour button so if I click on that one and I click on the contour button you can see how I made the Merry Christmas go away and I kept just the trees and the reason why I did that is because I had a long skinny piece of black scrap vinyl that I wanted to use. If you want to um, delete one of these and then show all contours, you would have one design and it would be, here, let me just, here, I'll duplicate that. I'll bring it down. Okay, so let's just say that you wanted the whole thing. Then this Merry Christmas, go into contour, 
and then I can do show all contours and this is the original okay so it's not the colored pieces that we're going to layer on top but it is just the Merry Christmas portion so I am actually going to hide that and then the other thing that I did is I noticed that we have some red overlay here a red heart here and then we have the two yellow stars and these are just overlays so I can I can move them off and we're going to lay them on top with our transfer tape and then we're, you also have the red heart and the red lines and we're going to layer that as well but what I noticed in the original design is that the two stars were absolutely independent of each other so I just selected both of them together and then I hit attach down here in my layers panel and now they are exactly in the orientation and the width apart that they need to be so when I lay them down I can do it all at one time and then also with the heart and the red lines same thing I just selected both of those red elements and then I attached them so now they are one cohesive unit and it'll make layering a lot easier okay so I've already cut this out I just did the regular everyday final setting and um, again I just did this on my joy but any of the machines will work so let's head back over to the craft table and put our project together okay so let's go ahead and work on our project now a couple of things normally I would either stain or put some chalk paint on this box etc however I think I'm just gonna leave this just like this this particular time and I, I really like this um, grain the other thing that you can do is you can um, you can actually just burn the top grain of your board and it comes out absolutely gorgeous it deepens these dark areas and it really shows off the lighter areas I do that sometimes too I do a lot of wood burning and sometimes I actually will just burn a whole surface but you could paint these you could stain them you could burn them or you could just leave them as is which I'm going to do for today I'm just going to leave this as is and this is um, something a little tip just in case you aren't aware that you can do this is this is my Cricut Joy mat it is the long one this is that long skinny black vinyl piece I was talking about so I've got the trees here I've got the words here and then I, mean, I had all this room over here so in the make screen I moved the red elements to this first mat and the stars to this first mat and I just placed these two color pieces where they needed to be and I cut it all out at one time so if you aren't aware that you can piece your vinyl onto one mat you can save yourself some time sometimes it's a little more you know to get things squared away but ultimately when I can I like to put all of my pieces on one mat and have it cut it out at one time okay so next I'm just going to remove the vinyl from the mat and I want to pull the mat away from the vinyl so that my vinyl doesn't curl and I'm just going to set that over there and then I'm just going to weed out these little pieces and this is a great scrap buster now normally I would like cut these apart but what I'm going to do is there's a lot of real estate still here so I'm going to kind of just set this aside somewhere safe for the moment because when these stars come off of here I can put this back on this carrier sheet and then I still have plenty of yellow scrap vinyl to use so just a little um, tip is you can put your vinyl back on here kind of like when we re, re um, save our transfer tape or when we save our transfer tape to reuse it 
So these stars are exactly in the orientation and distance they need to be. So we've got that ready. And then here, now I am going to cut. So this piece here is completely different. Now this is the heart and the lines in the same thing. I am going to just hold on to, there we go. I'm just going to hold on to this because I can put these two, or I can cut off these ends and then I still have the middle portion that I can use for another project. And these are exactly where they need to be. And then here I have my black vinyl. So I'm going to just cut down my excess and set that off to the side. Okay, so these are my trees. And let me make sure I don't cut my design. Okay, so that is the Merry Christmas. All right, so the next thing is just to weed the letters. Okay, so my letters are weeded. Now, what happened here is true to form, pretty much any time I do some small scripty stuff, then I always lose the little tittle, the dot, to my eye. So when I weeded out one of these smaller pieces, I think it was that one, I just placed it over my eye and while it's not a perfectly round circle, it absolutely looks like it was always there. So that's just another little tip. If you lose the dot to your I or your T and you've got some tiny little pieces like that, you can just put those in their place. Okay, and now we're going to take care of our trees. And we're just going to leave the outline of the trees. Now this little middle of this black star, I'm gonna go ahead and pull that off because that will be where our yellow one sits. In this tree here, I'm gonna leave that heart because it is like an offset for the red heart. I'm gonna be pulling out a tiny little star there and then these particular insides of this tree and okay so now hopefully this one plays nice because all these little bitty round circles need to stay and I think that is going to be the challenge um, question of the day, let me know down in the comments. Um, as a crafter, I know that I personally like to get a little bit of a jump here and there throughout the month of July on, you know, Christmas cards because when November rolls around and we have Thanksgiving, it is a busy, busy time. And I don't always have time to make my cards once the fall hits, especially being a teacher and I'm super, super busy. So are you the same way? Do you like to do a few things here and there in the summer for holiday prep? Or are you someone who just, you like to wait, which is, you know, totally okay Everybody has their own unique style, and that is okay. Um, but let me know down in the comments, like what kind of things do you like to do in the summer to prep for holidays, if that is your jam. 
Um, my husband, in fact, when I made the Christmas cards the other day, he was actually was like super excited. Number one, he never gets excited, but about Christmas cards in July, but, um, he was very excited and he even mentioned that we could, um, we could see about getting our Christmas pictures done a little early this year, which is great because we don't always get them done timely. All right. Oh, and are you somebody who does Christmas pictures? You know, some people just do them in their home, around the tree. Some people have a photographer. Um, let me know. Like, I'm just so curious as to what others do. Okay, so here are our sweet little trees. Okay, so next thing that I want to do is I am actually going to layer, I'm going to layer these, actually I don't want to cut that, I want to use this paper again. I'm going to layer the um, stars and the lines and the heart onto the trees and we're going to transfer everything all at one time. So I'm just going to pull up this paper. So again, this particular project is a great scrap buster. And I love projects that allow you to use up scraps, whether they are cardstock scraps or vinyl scraps. Okay. All right, move that out. Man, there, I have so much static on my fingers today. Okay, so I'm going to very carefully, because I don't want to get it all over, I'm going to lay down that yellow star, and I'm going to lay down this yellow star, and I'm just going to kind of put them in place. And then I'm just going to peel up my transfer tape and leave those stars in place. Okay. And I didn't burnish over the whole thing because I really didn't want the transfer tape to stick to all of that. Okay, so we have that. And then, is this wide enough? Hmm. I don't know that that's wide enough. So I'll get a bigger piece of transfer tape here. I'm going to put that back. I can save that for another deal. And, okay. Oops. I really like this final. So as you can see, my Vinyl is from Expressions Vinyl, and my, my transfer tape is from Cricut. This is the actual first roll that my husband had purchased when he got my maker for me. And um, I since have accumulated a bunch more transfer tape, including paper transfer tape. All right, so we got that. So these two little pieces, remember, I am saving these for the colored vinyl. I can put it back on there and just save that back in my scrap bin, and that will be for my transfer tape. Okay, so this here, I'm going to lay these red lines, and then I'm going to lay that heart down, and I'm just burnishing just that little bit of vinyl like just that tiny piece. Really, I could probably just use my finger. And now I'm gonna see if I can just actually, well, you know what? 
And let's do this. Where is that tiny piece of transfer tape from earlier? Okay, so I'm going to leave that down. And then I am going to take this transfer tape that I used a little while ago. And I'm going to place it over here. So we're going to have one big continuous and I'll go ahead and use this little piece. And I'm just going to cover that. I really can just leave it undone. I don't have to necessarily cover that. But I have these tiny pieces, so why not? Okay. So these are my trees. And I'm just going to burnish down the front and the back. So just like that, and then I'm going to bring in my box, okay, actually I'm going to take off the carrier sheet, then I'm going to bring in my box, and I love being able to lay down all of the things at one time. Now you could absolutely put the trees down and then put the stars down and then put the, you know, the red, you could piece it all together separately. I like to put it all on my blank all at one time. Okay, so then, oh, I need to dry fit this. So here's my Merry Christmas. And so this is eight. So I want the, I'm going to use the grid line of my mat. So this is at four right here. And I want this tree to line up with that four line as best as possible. Okay. And... I'm going to move this. Okay. And then I'm just going to burnish this down. And I'm going to lift all of this at one time. So we'll just lift all of it. Oops. Got to burnish that down a little bit more. And I'm just going to peel back the transfer tape onto itself, pretty flat. It helps release from that vinyl. Okay, and there we go. Look, that is so cute. I love it. That is so cute. And it did, it layered so well. Okay, and again, you could totally piece all of those things separately. And this will actually suffice for my Merry Christmas. So I'm just going to use that same piece of piece together transfer tape. And we'll do the back. So in the next several weeks, we're going to be doing a lot of fun things. We've got some travel plans and some creation plans for the channel. So it is going to be a busy, busy time. All right, here we go. Beautiful, that just popped right off there, just like it was meant to. Okay, and then I am just going to take the Merry Christmas, and you know, it pretty much covers all of the trees, so I'm just going to go straight up, get it fairly straight. 
straight and just put that down. And I'm going to give it a good burnish and pull that transfer tape off. Beautiful. Okay. And when you're working with wood, I don't know if you can see, like my transfer tape is now pretty cloudy. So I am not going to save the transfer tape. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let that go. I've got plenty of extra, but just something to be aware of when you're putting vinyl on wood, that sometimes your transfer tape starts to get a little cloudy. And that's just a good indicator of the fact that that piece is ready to go. All right, so this is our sweet little Merry Christmas card box. I am so pleased at how that came out. That is just so fun. And so this will just sit on, you know, on our counter or wherever we're going to put our cards. And then as I make cards for this season, they'll go in there. And then once those will get sent out, then as cards come in, then they'll go in here while we are just enjoying the season. Okay, well that wraps up our little little Hobby Lobby haul and our tiny little craft for today. I hope that you found this video was informative and inspiring. So if it was, make sure that you hit that like button and share it with your crafty friends that you think might enjoy this project as well. Don't forget that I am going to link this particular design space file down in the description along with a, um, a, all of the supplies that were used for today. And don't forget to check out your um, Hobby Lobby to see if any of those deals are still going on. Other than that, I think it was a success. So if you are not already a subscriber, I would love to have you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can join us as we post future content. And in the meantime, until I see you again, happy crafting. Thank you all so much for watching today. I'm so glad that you can join me at my craft table if you're not already, I'd love to have you as a subscriber and don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you'll know when new videos arrive. Have a great day and as always, happy crafting.